Hi, I'm Randy Robinson. This is Life Today TV. I have a wonderful guest, O.S. Hawkins, a longtime pastor in Southern Baptist Churches. He was a pastor for 20 years between First Baptist Fort Lauderdale and First Baptist Dallas. Uh, anyone in the Baptist circles certainly knows who he is. He has a book out now called The Joshua Code in stores. Be sure to check it out. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Randy. Good to be with you. And before I ask you some other questions, tell us real quick, what is the Joshua Code? Well, the, the secret's in the subtitle. It's, it's uh, the Joshua Code, 52 verses, scripture verses, every believer ought to know. It's really a devotional that one verse a week for a year to memorize, to incarnate in our lives. So many people have friends or loved ones that uh, that are unsaved or that don't know anything about the Word of God and they see a big black book and they don't know where to begin or where to start. Mm -hmm. And so it's a great tool to give to someone to be able to to identify 52 verses that everybody ought to know and how to get into the Word of God and know it. And then for the believer, it's a devotional guide to, to memor memorization. is a lost art in the Christian mm -hmm. faith. And it's a challenge to memorize one verse a week, which we can do. And there's so many profitable things about that. For older people, people my age, uh, that's a, it's a fight against uh, uh, Alzheimer's right. and other things. If you keep your mind sharp, there's no better way to do it than memorizing Scripture. So yeah. it's a challenge to do it's that. It's not all from the book of Joshua, is it? No, the only reason it's called the Joshua Code is from Joshua 1.8. Joshua 1.8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night in order that you may do all that is written therein. Then you'll make your way prosperous. Then you'll have good success. So it's a challenge to unlock that code, to get the Word of God. So many of us talk about getting in the Word of God, getting in the Word of God. What we need to do is get the Word, the Word of God in yeah. us. Yep. And that's what, it's a, that, that's what it is. And uh, we wrote it, all the proceeds and all the royalties go to a mission dignity, we call it. Uh, we're on a mission to bring dignity to a lot of folks, particularly their they're retired pastors. In most cases, they're widows living at the poverty line in their declining years. The average mm -hmm. age is about 85. Maybe they pastored out in the crossroads somewhere in uh, smaller churches and were never able to provide for their retirement. And then they lived in a church-owned parsonage, had to get out of it when they vocationally retired. Mm -hmm. And they're really the forgotten people. And so uh, we're, we're on a mission to bring dignity to them through an organization called Mission Dignity. Mm -hmm. And uh, it helps to undergird them with extra money every month to buy medicine and food and other things like that. What led you to get into that? It's a part of uh, Guidestone. When I, I was pastor of First Baptist Church in Dallas, when I was asked to come and lead the ministry at the time that was called the Annuity Board, we've since changed our name to Guidestone Financial Resources. It's a ministry that serves pastors, missionaries, Christian school teachers, hospital workers uh, with, fin with their financial needs, their investment needs, their retirement needs, their insurance needs, mm -hmm. all the needs that undergird the ministry. Our, our primary focus is on the minister of the gospel and, and undergirding him and serving him. And along the way, we realize that there are a lot of, a lot of folks that ha are past retirement age that have little or nothing and yeah. living at the poverty line. So we have to raise several million dollars a year to meet their needs. And it's one of the joys we have of being able to be Christ's hand extended to these good and godly people. Yeah, no, that's great to hear because one of the criticisms uh, of the church, which I've always thought was not really fair, is that, you know, we want to make a stand for moral issues, but we don't necessarily want to take care of people. But yeah. you're doing it. Yeah. You're we, taking we, care of people. We certainly hope so, yeah. Now, let me jump back to your your pastoring style. You, you are very much one of those guys who would maybe take a book and teach right through the book, right. line by line, scripture by scripture. I did that. You yeah. did that. Yeah, you were, you were, you were good at that. Um, that's not done as much, I don't think, these days. Well, there's a, there's a, there's, you know, things change and generational issues change. Uh, I still believe it's the, the Word of God, the Bible says, that, that breaks a rock to pieces. Mm -hmm. Uh, that convicts of sin. You know, Peter Peter preached the Word of God there at Pentecost, and the Bible says their hearts were cut. Mm -hmm. There's a forgotten word in the Christian vocabulary, and that's the word conviction. We never hear, we seldom ever hear about people talking about people falling under conviction of their sin mm -hmm. because it, it comes from the Word of God. And so if all we do is preach to meet felt needs or narrative type uh, alone without really expounding the Word of God because it's the Word of God that's 
powerful. It's the sword of the Spirit. And if you stick people with it, they'll bleed and uh, in, a, in a good way. And so, yeah, I think that the Word of God is, in, is vital in the preaching of the gospel. What do you think about the current trend? Okay, I, I'll, I'll just confess. I go to what I call a renegade Baptist church. They mm -hmm. don't call themselves that. That's my term. Um, but it was, it, was, it was a pastor who was in you know, a, a Baptist church. Right. And left and, and started a fellowship that was, in his opinion, um, a little more um, relevant to society, if you will, mm -hmm. more through the music, because uh, because right. the teaching is, you know, it, it, right, very traditional Baptist. It's, it's what I'm comfortable with, but that's been a trend. You know, Andy Stanley's been very successful mm -hmm. at it. Uh, Ed Young here in in Grapevine has got a, a big church and it's Fellowship Church. It doesn't have Baptist. Mm -hmm. On it, you know, our church we still pay, you know, dues to the Southern Baptist Convention, but it's it's not on the marquee. Right. What do you think of that trend? For for one. Well, for one thing, I'm for anything that gets the gospel out mm -hmm. and builds churches, and and things things are generational and they change. Uh, you know, some of the what we would call the great old hymns of the faith mm -hmm. that we sing were, were rejected when they were first sung. Yeah, they were bar tunes. Because they were bar tunes. Mm -hmm. Exactly mm -hmm. right. They were they they took the, the Wesleys, for example, and others, they, they took these great gospel lyrics, but they put them to the tunes the people of the day were singing from yeah. the bars yeah. and from the from the pubs. Yeah. And so they were rejected. Today, people sit in our traditional services and say, why can't we sing these great old hymns of the church? Well, those hymns of the church had the same tension that many of the new hymns today have. Yeah. And, you know, I think today some of the most anointed songwriters and hymn writers who've ever lived are living today, not, not the least of whom are the Gettys and, and other folks like that. But on the other side of that, that some there are some, I think, that take it too far to the extreme and sort of uh, change the New Testament gospel into what I call a new trendy gospel. Yeah. You know, the, the New Testament gospel emphasizes self-denial. Uh, the new trendy gospel has an emphasis on self-fulfillment. Mm -hmm. You know, the New Testament gospel says, if anyone come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross yeah. daily and follow me. Yeah. The New Testament gospel is centered in Christ and his plan of redemption. The new trendy gospel is centered in man in his need of self-fulfillment. Yeah. And so we've just got to be careful that in the midst of wanting to be, as John Stott said, that uh, relevant to a, to a new generation, that we don't sacrifice revelation on the altar of relevancy. Yeah. And uh, that's the tension and that's yeah. the situation. It's, it's uh, Jesus said, men don't pay, take new wine and put it into old wine skins because new wine, the fermentation process is still going on. It's, I know it's hard for some of Baptists to believe yeah, this. Yeah, we, we don't know the, what wine the, the is. It was grape juice. Yeah, come on, the, come on. The gases are expanding. The fermentation process is going. If you put it into old skins that are brittle, when it's expanding, they break and you lose the wine, Jesus said, and you lose the skin. Yeah. So Jesus said, you take this new wine and you put it into these new skins that have elasticity and both are preserved. You see, the wine is the message. It never changes. The skins are the methods. Yeah. And they ought to always be changing in order to, to reach a culture. Have a little bit of flex in there. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Thanks for your insight. If someone wants to check on your books, see what you're doing, mm -hmm. maybe ask you to come speak because you still speak all over the country, right. all over the world. They can find us through guidestone.org, guidestone.org. Guidestone and we also have several several books on there that are free downloads uh, and some of the commentary on James. Uh, you mentioned preaching through the Bible and other devotional books and others that are there. And then uh, the, uh, the Joshua Code, the 52 ver scripture verses everybody, every believer should know that we talked about at the beginning. This devotional book is available at Amazon or Barnes and Noble or any of the bookstores and all the proceeds and royalties from that go to Mission Dignity. Wonderful stuff. Thank you so much. Be Thank sure you, to Randy. check out O.S. Hawkins when he's on Life Today, lifetoday.org, and keep up the good work, brother. We appreciate it. Thank you, Randy. Appreciate it.